uh, you know, complaining again about the releases. I will do my best today to answer every single one of your questions as honestly and fairly as possible about what's going on in there. This round of releases, I don't think should have shocked anybody. There was maybe a name or two there that I personally would have kept around. But for the for the most part, a, a, there was a lot of talent there who, Dave, we didn't even know their names. Yeah. Not a clue, right? Yeah. That, I mean, a lot of these names probably shouldn't surprise anybody. But there were a few names that did surprise people, Bully. And, you know, I think at the top of the list would be Bronson Reed. Bronson Reed, who we just spoke to a week ago. <laughs> you know, somebody who is in a main event match on NXT. We spoke to, you know, the day of his match, and he was one of the names that was let go on Friday night. If I was in creative, if I had the pencil, if I had a say in the matter, there is no way in hell I would ever get rid of Bronson Reed. Just watching him work in the ring, uh, seeing his potential, a, a traditional super heavyweight, uh, the likes of a Bam Bam Bigelow, not quite sure why you would get rid of a guy like this. Um, tons of ups, upside to a guy like Bronson. Uh, every time we've seen him in the ring, I know I've appreciated and enjoyed his performance. Don't understand this one at all. Maybe if, if uh, there were rumors that these releases were more from Vince than anybody else. Like Vince almost handpicked them. Like I said, these are the rumors. Maybe Vince looks at a guy like Bronson and says, he's too heavy. Because Vince does have that. He wants his wrestlers to be in more, fit, you know, look the part a lot more, be in cosmetic shape, be a, you know, look like, uh, you know, like you belong on TV. I have never been a huge believer in that. The pro wrestling world that I come from and that you come from, Dave, is all shapes and sizes and colors and characters and w whatever. As long as you are a, a, a good uh, wrestler, as long as you're a good performer, a good worker, your look is unique to you. Look at a Bam Bam Bigelow or look at any other big man in the business. Um, so, yeah, I would, have, I would have never let him go. All of the others, I'm not shocked by. Well, I mean, let's let's dive in just a little bit. And you mentioned Vince McMahon, and from all reports, and we'll read some uh, comments from Dave Meltzer. He said this was strictly, this had nothing to do with Triple H or Shawn Michaels. This was strictly Vince McMahon, John Laurinaitis, and Bruce Pritchard that made these cuts. And as you know, Bully, we talked about it here on Busted Open. It wasn't too long ago that Vince McMahon did the tour of the Performance Center of NXT. And a couple of names from NXT started appearing on Monday Night Raw, Karrion Cross being the biggest one. He's your NXT champion. And we're get very confused at the way that Karrion Cross was used on Monday Night Raw. But now you're seeing people let go. Over the last year, Bully, between wrestlers and behind-the-scenes personnel, you're close to 100 people with the WWE that's been let go over the last year. Now, in the in the world of wrestling, you know, we've seen AEW, we've seen Ring of Honor, where even during very difficult times when they weren't even producing TV shows, they still paid their employees. WWE, you know, they're looking at the bottom line because unlike a lot of other pro wrestling companies, Bully, to be fair, they have shareholders that they need to speak to. Nick Khan was brought in not to build storylines, Nick Khan wasn't brought in not to build up personnel and wrestlers. Nick Khan was brought in to make that bottom line look better perception-wise to their shareholders and factually. So that's his job to do. But from everything we're hearing, this was like, again, John Laurinaitis, Vince McMahon, and Bruce Pritchard trimming the fat on these rosters. And I think a lot of people who watch NXT, these are names that have been important over the last year. Bronson Reed. There, there's reports that Jake Atlas, who's one of the names that was like, oh, that was was doing interviews less than 24 hours before being let go, which again is amazing to me. If you're having somebody do a media tour and yet you let him go, it's 
it's interesting when you look at the names. Leon Ruff is somebody that's been an underdog character on NXT and has been involved in some major storylines. Mercedes Martinez, we've seen lately be involved in big matches and main event storylines. Tyler Rust is a part of a new faction they just created on NXT called Diamond Mine. Uh, Bobby Fish, part of maybe one of the bigger factions in the WWE over the last decade, was let go. So the undisputed era as we know it is no more. Um, so a lot of names are names that are very, very familiar to the WWE universe. Bully. Like you said, there's some names here that weren't familiar, but there's a lot of names that were familiar for sure. As I was driving the other day, I was really giving this some thought, and it might even be before we spoke yesterday on the phone and we were chatting a little bit about what's going on. And I thought to myself, okay, why is Vince doing this to NXT? What's going on? Because it's not obviously the obvious reasons. Remember when Vince bought ECW out of bankruptcy court and he owned it? Yes. Let's just say you were Vince McMahon and you would have bought a company like ECW out of bankruptcy court and you decided to bring it back and breathe some life in it. Why would you be doing that? For what reason? Well, because it's a brand that fans are familiar with, a, a brand that's popular, and it's got a little bit of a cool edge to it. So maybe you can bring that to your product and carry that vibe over to yours. Cool edge to it. Kind of like yeah. NXT, right? Yep. People liked it. It was a popular brand. I mean, before AEW came around, th those takeovers in NXT, NXT was kind of the AEW before AEW came around, right? Yeah, I, I always thought it was like a, a bigger version of Ring of Honor. You know, had more, you know, had money behind it and the WWE machine behind it. And NXT was born out of Ring of Honor because uh, Hunter was smart enough to realize that that Ring of Honor style uh, there was a fan base for it, so they created their own version of it. Ring of Honor is very important uh, within the course of the past 20 years of wrestling. Uh, a lot of positives from Ring of Honor, but they get lost in the shuffle because they never took steps forward as a company, but what the company was able to do propelled so many stars you know, to, to, you know, into the, to the next realm. Well, a bu Bully, let's be factual here. Would there be an AEW without Ring of Honor? Would there be an nope. NXT without Ring of Honor? So you're talking about two of the bigger shows that we love, and for a while we're going head-to-head -head on Wednesday night. They were bred out of Ring of Honor. If Ring of Honor tells Cody and the Bucks, no, you cannot do all in, history takes a completely different turn. I'm not saying that Cody and the Bucks would have never eventually got to it, but we are not where we are right this very second. Ring of Honor could have said, nope, you're under contract to this company. That's it. You're not doing your all in. End of story. That, that's fact. No, or If anybody disputes it, you're ignorant. Or if Ring of Honor would have pu you know, publicized themselves as being a big part of all and things might have been different for Ring of Honor right now. One of the biggest mistakes that Ring of Honor has ever made was not putting the Ring of Honor, the ROH logo on all in. It should have read Ring of Honor and the Elite present all in because that was a much better representation of what that show was because without ring of honors production and money and yada yada behind all in all in doesn't happen anyway that's a separate story but it's an honest and truthful story um EC ecw and nxt ecw is cool it was edgy vince brings it back there are many of us who believe that vince mcmahon brought ecw back for one reason do you know what it was dave what's that to kill it. He was going to wring as much, he was going to get as much blood out of that stone as possible, and then he was going to kill it because he could not stand to hear those letters ECW anymore. And guess what? It was his to kill. He could do whatever he wanted with it. I own ECW. If I want to push it to the moon, I will. And if I want to destroy it, I will. All right, what's your point, Bubba? NXT. 
Vince owns NXT. Hunter doesn't own NXT. Shawn Michaels doesn't own NXT. Vince McMahon owns NXT. And I will do whatever I want to do with it. Thus, what's going on lately? I do not think that Vince is doing backflips over the fact that NXT, quote unquote, lost to AEW on Wednesday nights. That is a perception thing. And if there is one thing that I learned from Vince McMahon one on one, is that perception is reality, Bubba. Nobody gives a damn about the truth in wrestling. It's all about the perception. He, he basically had me cornered one day, Dave, teaching me this lesson. And the perception is that AEW won. So now I'm going to take NXT and I'm going to do whatever the hell I want with it. And I'm going to turn it in, in back into what it was originally meant to be. Dave, how many times in the past two years, three years, do we come on this show and go, oh, my God, TakeOver was better than a pay-per-view? Oh, my God. All the time. Uh, All the time. Uh, NXT was better than Raw or SmackDown. NXT almost became an ECW for Vince, another thorn in his side. Do you really think that Vince McMahon wants NXT to be a bet better product or a more liked product than Raw or SmackDown? Yeah, I would think not. Imagine if the New York Yankees or any professional sports team their triple A club was better, more liked, more appreciated, more watched, more talked about, more revered than the actual Major League Baseball team. No, Nobody would want that. And that's what NXT was talk, turning into for the WWE. Forget about the ratings. Yes, we understand that the rating on Wednesday night, the... 700 to maybe every once in a while, 800,000 number that they popped. And I, and I, I might be uh, being kind on these numbers right now. Despite the rating, we still like the product considerably better than Raw and most of the time more than SmackDown. So the cross treatment, the Keith Lee treatment, <clears throat> Vince making these cuts, it's his. I don't want people talking about NXT anymore the way they're talking about it. So now this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn it in to what it was originally supposed to be. Textbook definition of developmental system. And you're going to develop these talents from day one the way I want them developed in my image. I want big men. I want wrestlers that used to look like wrestlers. Yeah, Dave, I know you want to say something. No, I and I and I'm not and I'm not cutting you off, but you, you know, can cut me off. I don't care. But Vince McMahon, if you really look at the facts and you put pen to paper, he's he's right. This goes back to that Wednesday night war between AEW and NXT, and I want to, and that's really where it begins, and we'll talk about that. Let's talk about it start to finish because it seems like from all reports, the NXT that we have fallen in love with may be finished. And we'll talk about it when Bully and I are back right here on Busted Open. In 1964, CBS 205 Live as well. And from all reports and rumors, the structure of NXT could be changing. But Bully, we got we to gotta go into rewind here because you talked about Ring of Honor and the influence that was NXT. And I think that's where something really clicked with the WWE. And you got to go back to probably about six or seven years ago. And then you talk about the popularity of a CM Punk and a Daniel Bryan. They really, I think, started to understand the value of independent wrestling. Because if you look at the structure of the WWE for a long time, you saw a lot of athletes that weren't from the wrestling world and they brought them in and a lot of those characters and personalities didn't pan out. And then you saw the rise of indie wrestling. You saw the rise of a lot of affiliates like a Ring of Honor gaining steam and gaining popularity. And I think really Triple H, you know, who's the guy behind NXT, he was the one that really pushed for a developmental uh, product within the WWE. I mean, there's the story of where he's sitting in a meeting 
with a lot of WWE executives and they're talking about merchandise and TV time and everything else. And then he was like, well, wait a second. What about like the talent themselves and like developing new talent? And they looked at him like he had a third head, but he started NXT, you know, coming out of, you know, Florida uh, championship wrestling. And then we started to see the development of NXT. And really, to the takeovers. You to, you talked about the takeovers, bully, that have really outshined even the main roster pay per views. I remember, you know, the takeovers starting, and they were all at full sale until the one in 2015 in Brooklyn. It was right around SummerSlam, and I remember having a conversation with Doug on air, like, could NXT really sell out the Barclays Center? Like, could they sell out a 15,000 plus arena for a show that's, you know, one hour on the WWE network? And they did. And they didn't have a problem doing it. And that really started this, you know, this coming to surface, this emergence of NXT. Go ahead, Bully. Look Look at what you just said there about what you said to Doug. Can NXT really sell out the Barclays Center? NXT, despite being under the umbrella of the WWE, was something different than traditional WWE, right? Yeah, yep. And just the fact that it was different, people clamored for it, right? Yep. Did NXT sell out that first Barclays Center? Yes. Did AEW sell out All In? Yes. See the similarities? Anything and everything that is not WWE will be consumed by wrestling fans because I think wrestling fans are tired of WWE. Or maybe I should say um, smarter wrestling fans, wrestling fans that are in the know, not your average WWE fan. There are a lot of people that are turned off with the product and thus will run for anything else that is not traditional WWE. And NXT was more Ring of Honor, which was hot at that time, than traditional WWE. You, If you look at ECW, if you look at NXT, if you look at AEW, they are all very similar in, in a lot of ways. One of the ways they're all the most similar None of them were traditional WWE, and wrestling fans ran to them. It's true. It's absolutely true. And, you know, you look at, I remember WrestleMania 31 in San Jose, you know, in, in, on, in, around San Francisco. They had an NXT show. It wasn't a takeover. It was just an NXT show. It was, at a col- it was on a college campus. It was in a venue that held... I, I don't know, six or 7,000. I can't remember the name of the venue. They sold it out. And I remember Stephanie Mc, you know, obviously Triple H made the introduction that night. Stephanie McMahon was in attendance. And all people in attendance that night were chanting uh, FPG. You know, like, you know, they were saying, you know, because of the, the the PG product that was the WWE. And I remember Stephanie McMahon looking around startled. Like, she, she didn't get it. She didn't understand. But it goes back to what you're just saying. It's the rebellion. Pe- people want to rebel against anything that's ordinary, anything that's stale, anything that's the norm. And especially, Bully, as you know, a 15 to 35 year old they they're rebellious in nature and that was the NXT audience especially that night and it goes back to what you're saying it was cool it was edgy bully i think it's safe to say right now the WWE product is as far away from cool and edgy than ever I I really can't think of a time where the WWE product, you can label it as as uncool as it could possibly be. Um, Yesterday was the final day of the Star Wars marathon on TNT. I'm sure you were glued to your television set since Friday watching all the great Star Wars movies over and over again. And for those of you that don't know, Rogue One, greatest Star Wars movie of all time. Boom, there, I said it. Screw you, Cody. Um... Better than During, the first Star Wars movie? Absolutely, absolutely. Rogue One is the best Star Wars ever done, ever. But 
that's a that, that's a show for another time. Okay, sorry. My point was when you talked about cool and edgy and the WWE not being cool and edgy. I saw the commercial for Rampage for the first time last night during the Star Wars marathon on TNT. I was more into a one-minute commercial for Rampage than I was for any WWE product because it looked cool and edgy. That commercial made me want to watch Rampage. There's me going, all right, what do I got going on this Friday, uh, this Friday night at 10 o'clock? Uh, well, let's see if I'm out. You know, I could always be home by 10, or maybe I could just go out after the show. I'm making it a point to be in front of my television set at 10 o'clock this Friday night for Rampage because their commercial is cool and edgy. And I'm like, man, I want to see this. They're doing a lot of things right with AEW. And the, and the, uh, the conversation here is like, like not what AEW is getting right. It's more about what WWE is getting wrong. There's yeah. nothing cool and edgy. They have one or two good storylines, in my opinion. They have a handful of interesting characters, in my opinion. But that's it. But as far as that cool edginess that an ECW had, absolutely not. That NXT had, absolutely not. That AEW has, absolutely not. And I think therein lies the problem. NXT was cooler, it was edgier, it was fun, it was a better pro wrestling show, it was a better entertainment show, it was better than anything that was coming out of Raw or SmackDown. So here's Vince McMahon going, well, we lost on Wednesday nights, and even though we lost, people still like NXT more than they like Raw or SmackDown. Or at least that's what they say on social media. Or at least those, that's what those Jagoffs, LaGreca, and Bully talk about. So wh what am I doing with this place? But, uh, but Bully, let me ask you something. And I'm, I'm, I'm asking for pure honesty here. And we're going to open up the phone lines in a little bit. But obviously, I run into wrestling fans all the time that just want to talk and bullshit with me. I'm sure you, you run into wrestling fans all the time at the grocery store, no matter where you are. Have you met anybody, Bully, that said to you, God, I love Raw. Man, I, I, I love it. I, I love Raw. I can't wait for Monday nights. Raw's been so good. Man, I, I wish you guys would talk more about Monday Night Raw. You, 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 you rag on it. I don't know what you're ragging on. I love it. I think it's great. I got to be honest with you, Bully. Everybody I come in contact with, every, I have, first of all, nobody's ever said that to me the last couple of years. And most people are saying, I can't watch Raw anymore. I try. I try to watch it. I, I can't. I, I Or people say, you know, I watch every week hoping it's going to get better, and it never does. I get people saying they love AEW. I get people saying they love NXT. Heck, I get people saying they love SmackDown. I can't remember the last time somebody has stopped me and said, man, I love Monday Night Raw. Um, I don't remember the last time I had a fan or anybody random stop me and say, I love the WWE. It just doesn't happen anymore. They'll, they'll want to talk about the Attitude Era. Mm -hmm. Or if they want to talk about pro wrestling going on right now, they'll be like, hey, what's that new company? I caught it the other night. You know, it, you know, a lot, you know people flipping around and going crazy, whatever. There was a lot of blood. Whether you agree or not with the constant flipping around or whether you agree or disagree with all the blood, that's what people are talking about. People don't come up into the grocery store and go, oh my God, Bubba, did you see Raw last night? No, they are talking about AEW. These are the cracks that I have been talking about for a long time. Cracks can be people leaving. Cracks can be ratings. Cracks can be what the perception is. All cracks in the wall and cracks lead to bigger cracks, bigger cracks lead to holes, holes in the wall lead to the whole freaking thing come crumbling down. Bully, 18 months ago, we were talking about AEW going head-to-head -head with NXT. AEW, this new show that's on TNT, well, WWE is countering with NXT live at the same time. And this is a this is a product in the show that our fan base love. It's got the 18 to 35-year-old. And you know what? We are going to stop AEW. Bully, you said it all the time. Vince McMahon learned from WCW. You got to you got to cut it right when it starts. Well, they tried to and they failed. What went wrong? Bully and I will talk about it. We're back right here. 2000 October of 2019, Bully of being on TNT live on Wednesday nights. And what is the WWE to counter that? Hey, let's take our hot young product and let's put it head to head. 
because a lot of people who like AEW probably like NXT as well. And you know what? It's more than just putting a product head to head. Let's be fair, Bully. They went all in with NXT being a third brand. How do I know that? They had NXT be a part of Survivor Series in 2019. Think about that, Bully. Less than two years ago, less than two years ago, NXT was a part of one of the biggest pay-per-views of the WWE Survivor Series. Not only were they a part of Survivor Series, they dominated at Survivor Series. And what else did we see? We also saw some main roster talent moving over to NXT. Also, Charlotte Flair, one of the biggest wrestlers on the main roster, when she won the Rumble, what championship did she go after? She went after the NXT Women's Championship. So, I mean, Bully, it's safe to say that WWE went all guns blazing when it came to NXT. So why all of a sudden the 180 on NXT? Because they lost. <laughs> Correct, Amundo. That's it. At one point, they were willing to push this developmental brand to the moon. Now, you lost. You lost the perception war. And you actually lost the hard number war, except for the half seven, dozen or so times. Seven weeks, maybe, that yeah, they won. Yeah, that you did win. Now, I will still s sit here and say that NXT was a superior professional wrestling show to everything else. And when it came to AEW, AEW was a more fun wrestling show. And many times the more fun wrestling show is better than the superior. But it's like Rush and Kiss. Rush is the superior band. But I'm going to see Kiss every day of the week yeah. because they're more fun. But what happened in the end with NXT? Vince is pissed off about this situation. If you don't think he is, you don't really know him. And, and most people probably don't know him. But from what I do know of him, from what I've learned about him, he is extremely competitive. He does not like to lose. And he did not want a situation like WCW on his hands ever again. Is AEW and NXT a WCW situation? No. Is it close? It's as close as it's ever been. Actually, TNA was probably a little closer, but w WWE was doing still doing fours and fives at that time. But TNA was doing 2 million viewers. They were closer than AEW will ever ha is right now. But that's the biggest competition that they really had. But in the perception, looking at it from a per perception point of view, AEW has a lot more steam behind them perception-wise than TNA ever did when it came to giving the WWE competition. Would you agree yeah, with that? Yeah, agreed. And it, also, TNA made a big mistake of going head-to-head -head with Monday Night Raw. Like, Horrible. I think, yeah, that was a horrible decision. So, you know, again, perception-wise, they got slaughtered. You know, they they had Jeff Hardy debut with TNA. They did it at the end of the show in a really wonky way. And, you know, how did it, Monday Night Raw counter? With Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels in the middle of the ring face-to-face. -face. I mean, they, they, they didn't have a chance. And then you talk about the ratings now. And, bully, 20 years ago, to win the night on cable, you had to have a six point. Like, you had to, you had to have a six. AEW's winning... The winning the night in cable on a Wednesday, we get a one, get a one, and also too when it comes to perception, let's look at the live events and the and and the dynamites and raws and smackdowns are at the AEW are getting a hell of a lot more fans to buy tickets for their shows than the WWE is right now, and the biggest example of that is that you got 19,000 fans going to be in Arthur Ashe Stadium in Queens. You got 15,000 fans that are going to be in Newark, New Jersey for a Dynamite. Fuck, fucking WWE can't sell out the Garden for a SmackDown where they've already said it's going to be a super, a super show with Monday Night Raw stars and John Cena's going to be there. 
I did hear I mean, that. <clears throat> I did hear that tickets are doing better though with Cena. Tickets Which are you would doing expect. Yes. Tickets are doing better. You're, you're right. Tickets are doing better with Cena, but you know what? John Cena had some comments that he made recently to Forbes magazine, which I found interesting because John Cena is talking about, again, the problem with the WWE and that they're doing a lot with the older veteran talent. And and John Cena has even come on to say that, you know what, they got to change this. They got to get younger. John Cena is saying this. And Forbes magazine is talking about it. Because they got to stop relying on the Cenas and the Edges and the Goldbergs to se- to to sell tickets. I'm not a believer in the you got to get younger. I think you need to have a mixture of both. Look at what AEW is doing. Yes, the 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 talent that they're pushing is younger talent, but they're using the veteran talent to help get them over. That's what WWE should be doing. They should be using their veteran talents to get their younger talents over. Goldberg and Bobby Lashley. Is it really getting Bobby Lashley over? No. No, it's not. Because we've, what seen, this, utilization, we've seen this show before. I'm sorry. What but utilization? We've seen show. Yes, I, I'm agreeing with you. I'm sorry. What utilization of veteran talent is the WWE using right now to get over younger talent? If it's this, uh, if it takes this long to come up with it, there is none. Well, because let's look at it. Let's look at the matches that we're going to see at SummerSlam, for example. Right? You have Lashley and Goldberg. Goldberg, we've seen this story before. Lashley's already your champion. Lashley's a veteran, dude. Like La- La- Lashley's not a young talent by any stretch of the match. Wait, I, I mean Lashley's close to forty years old. So you're not talking about a young talent on your roster that you need to get over. Lashley's been there, done it. Lashley's already main evented WrestleManias, for God's sake. Then you have Edge with Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins is another guy. He's been there, done that. He's been with the WWE for a very long time now. And then you have Cena and Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns, once again, not a young talent. Roman Reigns has been there, done that. Roman Reigns is the top of the food chain when it comes to the WWE. So to answer your question, the answer is they don't have any veteran talent getting younger wrestlers over. What is AEW doing with their veteran talent? What veteran talent are they using to get their younger wrestlers over? They're using Sting to put over Darby <laughs> Allen. Right. You know, they've used Jericho to put over Orange Cassidy. Yep. Uh, they use Christian Cage to, to put over Jungle Boy. Mm-hmm. And it's not just about putting somebody over as in get, getting the one, two, three. It's about sharing a spotlight with them. Archer and Jake, uh, Taz's yep. crew with Taz, yada, yada. We can go on and on. Uh, the rub at the announce table for Excalibur getting to hang and bang with JR and uh, Shivani. It's a great balance over there. The same way ECW had a great balance. I wish NXT would have used more veteran talent to help get their younger guys over. When it comes to the WWE, it's not happening. And you look at this list of wrestlers that got released, all young talent that maybe one day could have turned into something. I'm just giving you the other side of the coin. From what I've seen of this talent up till right now, I'm sorry, I just don't think any of them are ready. I would I, one other person I would have kept around is Leon Ruff. Leon Ruff is the ultimate underdog, a Spike Dudley esque look and character that could get beat up all the time. And just by the fact that he got beat up all the time, people will absolutely love him and clamor for him to make a comeback, get a shot in, maybe a victory. There's so many things you could have done with a Leon Ruff. But Vince woke up on the side of the bed that said, I want everybody, what do you say, under 30, and I want uh, over six feet tall or something like that. Well, you know what? When we come back, Bully, let's read the comments from Dave Meltzer, who said he spoke to somebody on the inside. So it's kind of interesting because it really really circles back to the conversation that we've been having. Also, we're going to go back to the Wednesday Night War. And I thought the best thing was breaking up that Wednesday Night War. It seems that that was the worst thing that could have possibly happened. And again, we got a lot of phone calls, a lot of nation members that want to join in on the conversation. We'll do that when Bully and I are Meltzer. 
And Dave Meltzer uh, said this over the weekend on the Wrestling Observer. I want to get your take on it. He said the recent round of WWE NXT cuts were made by Vince McMahon, Bruce Pritchard, and John Laurinaitis. And more changes are coming to the brand. According to Dave Meltzer, he says Triple H and Shawn Michaels had nothing to do with the Friday night cuts that saw 13 talents, including Bronson Reed, Bobby Fish, and Mercedes Martinez, let go. Meltzer said the mentality is that NXT is going to change in some ways, likely going back to the earlier days of developmental with getting talent that are younger, bigger, and that could someday main event a WrestleMania. His quote is, the feeling is they lost the war with AEW, which they did, and we're getting back to younger and bigger. Meltzer said, adding that there are divisive options with key decision makers as to what wrestling is right now. And that is to get younger and bigger and that McMahon has the ear. And the war, the wording is no, this was the wording that was used that Meltzer talked about on the Observer. No more midgets, no one starting at the ages of in their 30s. And he wants people who have big box office attractions and main characters. So this is kind of going back to the WWE that we saw 15 years ago when they started the PG era of the WWE. Bigger is better, over-the-top characters that can main event a WrestleMania. Over the last 10 years or so, it's been more of the Ring of Honor work ethic type wrestlers that we've seen with the Punks and the Daniel Bryans and the Seth Rollins and wrestlers like that, Kevin Owens. If this is correct, that type of wrestler is going to be obsolete, and you're going to see more of the big brawny wrestlers that can main event a WrestleMania one day. If and that's these what, reports and rumors are true. And that's what Vince looks for. But, I mean, I mean, the world of pro wrestling can be so contradictory at times. Uh, if Vince McMahon is looking for people of that stature, why release a Braun Strowman? Well, Braun Strowman was released for other reasons. You know, there is no rhyme or reason. There is no rule book for wor the world of wrestling. There are so many things that can happen at any given moment, and what applies to one does not mean it will apply to the other, even if it is a complete apples-to-apples -apples comparison. Once again, I go back to what I said about e Vince buying ECW. It was his company. He could do whatever he wanted with it, and that includes kill it off. NXT is his developmental brand. Laurinaitis and Bruce Pritchard right by his side. Why? Because I believe that Laurinaitis and Bruce Pritchard think most like Vince McMahon. At the end of the day, he's going to want to hear the other side, but he's going to want people to support his vision. Hunter has no say in this matter. Zero. Sean, no say in this matter. Zero. I'm sure that they have voiced their opinions. But at the end of the day, it, every decision in the WWE is a Vince McMahon decision. Whether I listen to so, a talent who wants to turn herself into a superhero or a, whether I want to turn my developmental brand that was getting more over than, my, uh, than Raw or SmackDown into the AAA that it was meant to be. And that's it. It's really, really simple. At the end of the day, the WWE is still a mom and pop fruit stand. And pop runs the show. From top I, to bottom. But I think there's two sides of it. First of all, with okay. Triple H. Well, no, because I think with I think what first of all with Triple H bully, I think everybody just assumed, hey, when Vince steps down, it's gonna be Triple H that steps up and is gonna be in charge and gonna be running things. I don't know if that's the case anymore when I look at the structure of the WWE. We might be looking at, and again, this is just speculation, that Triple H is more on the outside looking in. You know, Nick Khan is in here. Nick and Khan is second command to Vince McMahon in the WWE. Nick Khan isn't looking at like storylines or work ethic or who could be a, a, a wrestler. He's looking at the bottom line. And like you just said, Vince McMahon has his perception of what a WWE supposed superstar is supposed to be. I think that vision of Triple H and that vision of NXT, I don't think that's the future of the WWE right now, Bully. Especially when it comes to the stature of wrestlers. We could sit here and talk about the Undisputed Era all you want. Undisputed Era wasn't going to do anything other than be a success in NXT. 
None of those guys. Listen, Diamond Mine's dead in the water. Bobby Fish, have a nice day. Kyle O'Reilly, we'll see what happens. I've been saying this for a long time. The only guy worth money over there is Adam Cole. And we're, we'll see what Adam Cole, what happens with Adam Cole. Because if I'm the WWE right now, I'm going to throw a lot of money at Adam Cole. Not because I want to push Adam Cole to the moon. I would. They won't. It's because I don't want the perception out there that Adam Cole's contract is coming to an end and he has now made a conscious decision to go to AEW and choose AEW as opposed to being moved up to the main roster. That's the perception that Vince does not want out there. Bully, and this may be an answer you can give us on the other side because we're just about to break, but the question I'm going to pose to you and the Busted Open Asian as well, we're going to go heavy on the phones in the next hour, Bully, is about the Wednesday Night War. Like if things would have gone differently, hell, if they didn't have NXT go head to head with AEW, would we be having this conversation with NXT? And obviously, if NXT was able to beat AEW in the ratings over the last two years, would we be talking differently about uh, NXT? If if the WWE decided to not put NXT head to head with AEW, or if the Wednesday Night War went a little bit differently than it did, would we be having this conversation right now? No, I think AEW would have just had a bigger viewership by now. I said from day one that NXT being moved to 8 o'clock on Wednesday nights on USA was nothing more than a defensive chess move. That's all it was. Because there's no way that Vince was going to allow another company to have primetime cable network television unopposed. So when I look at it as a chess as a chess game, AEW moved a pawn with their very first um, episode of Dynamite. And you can't say that it's any more than a pawn because it was a brand new show. And here's our best foot forward with a pawn. Because that's the that that's all they really had on their chess on their chessboard. Yeah, they had the the rook and the king and the queen and the knight and the bishop, but we didn't even know who those players were yet, what they were going to be. Yep. WWE came out with a rook or a bishop or a knight, right? They came out with that immediately because it was a defensive move. This wasn't pawn for pawn. No way, shape, or form. And AEW, obviously, as we know, eventually won. And and that's it, the perception of winning. And that's why before we went to break, I asked you, so that first week comes along, AEW beats NXT, and the WWE does something very out of character for them. They release a statement in which they congratulate AEW, which means they acknowledged AEW. A young company, a brand new company. Guys like me and you know that it took years for the WWE to acknowledge anybody. But the fact that they acknowledged AEW, wow, that was a big deal. That was almost a victory for AEW in itself to have yep. the, the Empire acknowledge them. It's like the Empire acknowledging the rebellion. They released a statement. Congratulations, but keep in mind, that this is a marathon, not a sprint. Now, me and you were having a conversation yesterday, Dave. What's your take on the marathon and the sprint? And should NXT have looked at it as a marathon as opposed to a sprint? They should have looked at it as a sprint. They should have went for the knockout punch early, which, you know what, Bully? If you really look at it, they may have done that. If you think about them declaring that NXT is the third brand with having NXT a part of Survivor Series, having them dominate Survivor Series, having Charlotte, you know, go after the NXT Women's Championship. I mean, those, those are that that's swinging for the fences when you do things like that. So maybe they publicly said, hey, this isn't a sprint. This is a marathon. Let's give them a cookie early on because we know we're the WWE. And we're going to dominate when we decide that we want to dominate. I think they decided they wanted to dominate, and they still lost. I think the WW, I think NXT 
swung for the fences every single week. As a fan of NXT, I liked their product. Um, after Halloween Havoc of last year, I started to love their product. I thought they put their best foot forward every week. There's no way in hell that they were going to win because a bunch of rebels started their own company. A bunch of rebels found a wrestling fan who had a lot of money who wanted to to do wrestling in a different way, shape, form, and vision than anybody has done it in 25 years. And they all got together and they got the people's attention with a more fan-friendly company. I don't, I don't know what NXT could have done to fight that type of revolution. You can't. History showed that it's impossible. No matter what the WWE did back in the day, they couldn't drown out the ECW chance, no matter where they went. So what did Vince have to do? He had to buy it and kill it. There's no way in hell you were going to stop this AEW surge. So they tried to put on great shows every Wednesday, NXT did, and they did. But it wasn't going to top AEW and what they were able to do. Because they had that wrestling fan behind them that just didn't want any more part of the WWE. And because NXT fell under the umbrella of WWE, you know what? Screw them too. That's, just, that's the simplest way of looking at it. Uh, you can have everybody dissect this until the cows come home. That's what happened. AEW were the cool kids in town. And when the cool kids are in town, if you have a chance to hang out with the cool kids, you want to hang out with the cool kids. Cool kids or the rich kids? Who do you want to hang out with? You want to hang out with the cool kids. And right now, the WWE is not cool. There is nothing cool about the WWE product. And you want to know something, Bully? You and I had this conversation yesterday, and I said it to you. This isn't like the 83 weeks with WCW where Shawn Michaels and Triple H went to Vince McMahon and said, you got to change this product. We're getting killed by these young kids, you know? And, and I met, like, young kids with WCW as far as their perception and their attitude and what kind of product they were putting on TV. WWE's not going to be able to do that in 2021. They're a publicly traded company with a lot of shareholders that they have to talk to. They're not going to do anything like the Attitude Era. But you know what? AEW can have Nick Gage show up with a pizza cutter. Hell, you know, there's all these threats. And, and supposedly, again, from reports and innuendos that maybe even the WWE tried to push this along with Pizza Hut. Like, do you really want to be sponsoring a product like this? Then you had PBR saying... Hell, we definitely want a sponsor a product like this. This is our demographic. So you know what? This family Pizza Hut might have questions about it. You know what? We don't. Not trying to correct you or anything. It was Domino's, not Pizza Hut. So just a little, little thing. Yeah, no problem. No Shit, problem. Both are shitty. Hey, there you go. There you go. <laughs> right there. There you go. Now you just killed Domino's and Pizza Hut as potential sponsors. Good job. I'm sorry uh, when you're when you're an Ital when you're an Italian from Jersey, you're not eating Pizza Hut or Domino's. Well, you're a Swiss from Jersey, but I get your point. Anyway, do you think that this is what I see from a perception point of view with AEW is I think AEW is let letting WWE screw up and they're just taking advantage of it and garnering the good perception. Look at all the people. Look, 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 look let's take an Alistair Black, right? Yeah. WWE fans were pissed Aleister Black was let go, right? Yes. AEW scoops him up instantly. If you're a fan of Aleister Black and you're pissed off that WWE let him go and now he shows up on AEW, it's almost like it's reinforced to you that WWE are the bad guys in this one. You should have never let Aleister Black go. Now I'm doubly pissed off with you, and I doubly love AEW for picking him up because they wouldn't have picked him up so damn quick if he wasn't as good as we thought he was. It, it, it's simple human emotion. Of course, and, and it even goes to a business level, too. Listen, Nick Khan is trying to do his job, make money. Like, I love the fact that on social media Saturday, I just posted a picture of Nick Khan. 
I didn't say anything. I just posted a picture of Nick Khan, and people are screaming at me. Why are you always hating on the WWE? I said nothing. I just posted a picture of Nick Khan and just let people go nuts. To wrestling fans, Nick Khan is the enemy right now. Or to wrestling fans that are, you know, social media savvy, and and I believe a lot of them are. Um, he he's the enemy. Yeah. Yeah, Vince made these last round of cuts and everything, but there wasn't really anybody there that meant as much as a Braun Strowman or a Bray Wyatt or an Iconics, or at least in my mind, the Iconics. So, yeah, he's the enemy. So AEW's kind of sitting back, and they're going, hey, here's our product every week. And every time, oh, Big Show, you were unhappy with the way the WWE was using you? Come on in. Hey, Mark Henry, the WWE didn't want to give you another run, or they didn't want to let you do what you wanted to do behind the scenes. Come on in. Hey, Christian, the WWE didn't want to, you know, bring you back for any reason. And Come on in. AEW is Noah's Ark. WWE is the great flood. That's the way I look at it. Yeah, and and you know what? Perception is reality, Bully. When you have companies like Ring of Honor that said, we're not letting our employees go during this difficult time, and then you have AEW that hasn't let anybody go, and then you have the WWE that touts the fact that they're making money every financial quarter. Hey, we're doing great. Oh, we're, our pay-per-view numbers are up because we're on Peacock, but we're whacking people left and right. And they say it's because of financial reasons. Well, I'm sorry. Whether that's true or not, and we could have a business advocate on this show that could break it down. It doesn't matter. Perception is reality. When you're a fan of pro wrestling and you're seeing your some of your favorites let go, where they're saying it's because of budget cuts, and financial reasons, but then the other hand, they're saying, hey, we're making more money than we have in recent memory. Perception-wise and PR-wise, that looks bad. And then you double down, bully, and Nick Khan and Vince McMahon on a financial call a week ago are saying, hey, AEW's not competition. Oh, let him, let him have our talent. Pal, you shouldn't talk that way and let people know about it. When they make a public statement like AEW is not competition and I've said this before it reminds me of the scene in A New Hope the very first Star Wars where the commander says to the to, to the general we've detected a flaw in the Death Star should we prepare your ship to evacuate and he goes are you out of your mind we're, we're getting ready to do a victory lap over here. We're about to kill the rebellion. And you're talking about evacuating the Death Star? Don't be so stupid. It's the same thing. You can't get that cocky. Did they have... How is... You talked about 83 weeks. Bischoff and Turner. How is... Tony Khan, well, Tony Khan is more of an Eric, Eric Bischoff and Ted Turner all rolled into one because it's Tony Khan's money. Or you can say it's his dad's money. I don't know. It's the family's money. It's the family's it's like, money. It was the fa- yeah. It's not like it was Ted Turner's money and Eric Bischoff's mind. This is Tony Khan's mind and Tony Khan's money. Whether you agree with Tony Khan's mind or not, that does not matter. You don't think this is similar to w- the WCW situation? What do you need? What did WCW had have? They had money, they had talent, they had TV. What does AEW have? They have money, they have talent, and they have TV. Why should we think that AEW couldn't give the WWE a run for their money? It's happened before. This is why I will go back and uh, put uh, use WCW as a and as example. Why I use ECWs as examples, not because I want to spout off at the mouth about ECW, yada yada. It's because they tell us about the history of pro wrestling and what can happen when you compare it in an apples to apples way. The. AEW is ticking up in their viewership. 
Even if they're holding steady, that's a good sign. Holding steady and ticking up. I don't care if you tick up by 10 viewers, as long as you're ticking up. Let the WWE continue to do whatever it is that they're doing that is giving them their own negative press or own bad perception. Stay the course with your company. Stay the course with your product. I think in the next couple of weeks, they are going to come in with a one-two punch that's going to put even more eyes on the product. Well, I, Bully, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, WWE once again went swinging for the fences this last month, Matt, last you know last month, right? They're yep. saying, "Hey, we know what AEW is doing. We know some surprises they have. You know what? We're gonna lay some haymakers on AEW. They brought in Cena. They brought in Goldberg. They brought back Edge. Has it really done anything for the ratings?" And, you know, live events, It's a, there's an uptick in live events. There's an uptick in ticket sales. But they're not selling out. I'll say this, Bully. And this might be WWE's worst nightmare if they want to acknowledge it or not. If you would have told them less than two years ago that you would have AEW drawing over a million viewers, they were going to beat NXT and make you change the model of NXT. And, oh, in the summer... Around SummerSlam, they're going to be outselling you in ticket sales around the country. I don't think the WWE would have been able to wrap their mind around that, Bully. But that's exactly what's happening right now. I completely agree with you, Dave. You want a million... What, in, if you want a million dominoes to fall, which is the most important domino? The first. What was the first domino to fall who showed up on nitro first which was the first domino who showed luger. up luger uh okay you're, you're right I, I, I you're right but i don't look at luger as really the first domino but you are right i looked at it more as hall and nash okay that's the domino that actually meant something but you're right hall and nash show up on nitro and all of a sudden things start to change rather quickly, right? Yep. I have your Hall and Nash. Their names are Punk and Danielson. You don't think that makes things change rather quickly? Things are changing. Am I, am I giving the these floor. guys too much credit? Am I no. giving these guys too much credit? No, no. Am I, because, giving, no. am I giving CM Punk, who just took his bat and ball and he went home and got his ass kicked in a fucking octagon two times or three times? Or am I giving him too much credit? Am I giving little Brian Danielson from Ring of Honor uh, too much credit? Because uh, he, the only way he could get over was because a bunch of wrestling fans bitched and moaned and cried. And right now, you all, I hope you all know that I'm being brutally sarcastic about these two guys. Am I giving them too much credit? No, because, Bully, what do we always hear as wrestling fans? The Attitude Era, the Attitude Era. You know, WCW with the NWO and Sting, the Attitude Era with the Dudleys and Edge and Christian and the Hardys and Rock and Stone Cold. That's what everybody talks about. But they tend to forget what just happened nine years ago. And that was, there was a small period of time when the WWE was cool again. And Punk brought back that cool factor. All of a sudden, it was cool wearing CM Punk t-shirts. We saw organically Daniel Bryan rise to the very top with one of the greatest WrestleMania moments of all time. And then, and then there was an about face. There was, there was a generation of wrestling fans, Bully, that grew up on, on Brian Danielson and CM Punk. And they're watching AEW right now. Yep. There's going to be a generation of wrestling, of, of wrestlers that grew up on Daniel Bryan and CM Punk. Hell, there might be a, a next generation of wrestler that the product they watched wasn't WWE. There might be a time where the dream of a of a of a new wrestler isn't to go to the WWE at all. It might be to go to AEW. How do I know? They AEW right now, bully, has a stranglehold, not a firm grasp, a stranglehold on the 18 to 35 year old.
if you're a if you're a wrestler, young wrestler aspiring to be in the WWE, and if you can see through the clouds, you look at young talent being released, you look at old talent being released, and you got to ask yourself, why wouldn't I be one of those young talents or grow into one of those old talents to get released? The WWE is all about opportunity. Listen, this is not all bad. The WWE does give you opportunity. It's not the same opportunity that it was 20 or 30 years ago. It's different. But if you can find your way to su- find your way to survive, you can do very well in that company. And that's a fact. This is not all dog pile on the rabbit negativity about what talents can or can't do there. But if I'm a younger wrestler, do I think the grass is really that green? I know for a fact the grass is not greener on the other side. Listen, the grass was as green as fucking green gets for me and Devon. You will never hear me say a bad word about them when it came to the opportunity that was granted. It was the opportunity was promised to us and given to us after we took it. That does it doesn't go that way anymore. There's nothing but opportunity in AEW, immediate opportunity. All these people, when CM Punk debuted on backstage, everybody was doing backflips. I Go back and find the tapes of this show where I said, I don't know what you're all excited for. He ain't going to say shit. WWE had final say on what backstage did. They weren't going to let CM Punk say whatever he wanted to say. Now... Holy shnikey balls. Here's a live microphone. Here's 10 minutes of TV time. Knock them dead, kid. That's what I would do. Hi, Phil. Here's your live microphone. Bye-bye. Don't say fuck. See you later. Yep. I'm dropping that. You know what I mean? That's about the only rule. Just don't drop an F-bomb on live television. Other than that, do and say whatever you want. Because in this situation, you can do no wrong. Yes or no, Dave? You always hear like a stone cold Steve Austin say it's different now. The art of the promo. I was just listening to an interview he did with Ric Flair. And both him are saying, you know what? It's different now. It's it's different now. You can't just go out there with a live microphone and say whatever you want. In the WWE, it's like that. In AEW, it's going to be a different story. If CM Punk is agreeing to come back, you think he's coming back with being restraints? Zero restraints. Everything on his terms. It has to be. A guy like that, it has to be on his terms for himself. Otherwise, there's no point in coming back. Well, you know, I kind of want to say this, but I can't say this. Last night, I was on Instagram, and I just happened to come across that punk, uh, punk Cena sit-down contract signing where Johnny Ace and, and Triple H were standing over Punk, and Punk's looking right at them, and he is verbally assassinating them, where Triple H has the look on his face like, scumbag. And Hunter knows he can't do a damn thing about it. And Punk is sticking the knife into Triple H's heart and twisting it, spitting on it, and then pouring salt on the wound. That's the version of CM Punk that everybody wants. Unfiltered and speaking his mind on whatever he likes. And that is going to open up floodgates. Because people, for some sick reason, want to hear wrestlers bury the WWE. What did ECW do back in the day? Who did we go after? You went after Everybody. WCW and WWF. Everybody. Go back and watch Taz in 97, 98. He goes after everybody by name. If you're going to be a revolution... Be a real revolution. Be rebellious. Say what you want to say. Be the Sex Pistols. Be the Clash. Be the Ramones. Don't be the records company's version of these companies. Be your version of this company. And I think the opportunity with Punk on the mic and Danielson in the ring to do all this stuff. 
All right, so here's the counter. I know Ed, I know we got to take a break, but we're going to get to the full call. No, right we're not taking a break. break. We're going to be rebels. We're not breaking. That's right. So <laughs> Ed just right. gave a look. Holy shit. Yeah, um, I'm terrified. But, I'm terrified with the look Ed just gave me. I, oh, my God. It's the, look, it's the stare of I don't know what it is. But bully, <laughs> let, let, let me ask you this. A lot of people will counter like, Come on, AEW should be above this. Like, don't mention the WWE. Be your own company. Now, I can understand the argument there, but isn't there something to be said about just sticking the middle finger at the company that's been trying to keep you down and weren't able to keep you down? Who are you referring to? Who should be sticking the middle finger up? A Cody. Uh, uh, um, uh, um, um, Malachi Black. A CM they did it. Punk. They did it. Cody did it. Listen, Cody left the WWE career mid Carter. Yes, with uh, with a taste, with a taste every now and then of some main event status. Yes or no? Uh, is that honest? Uh, I I don't even know if you could really even say he had a taste that main event status. Maybe I was being a little bit more kind than you were, but I get what you're saying. Goes to Ring of Honor, starts to hang out with the cool kids. Who were the cool kids? Bucks. Matt and Nick. He left the rich kids to hang out with the cool kids. I just asked you before, who'd you rather hang out with, the cool kids or the rich kids? He starts hanging out with the cool kids. Him and the cool kids decide to do something. All in is the middle finger. Everything happens that after all it, that's now this is all gravy. This is all this is just steamrolling and steamrolling and steamrolling. If you don't think it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger, you're wrong. They need to tighten their screws. I've been saying it from day one. If they do, I see nothing but an upside for AEW. They need a little bit more balance, but the way this is all growing pains right now, Dave. They've been in existence for what? Two years? Two and a half. Hey. It will be October that AEW Dynamite's been on the air for two years. It hasn't even been two years yet. All growing pains. That's all it is. They're going to get past all this. And if they run into real problems, Tony's got the money to buy his way through real problems. There's nothing but an upside. And when, listen, ECW was the original and true rebellion. And real rebellions don't have money. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the rebellion in Star Wars. They were put together with spit and glue. ECW was put together with spit and glue. Okay, Paul didn't have real, real money. He, he, he you know, he he borrowed from Peter to pay Paul. This rebellion, which is close to the ECW rebellion as possible, has money. If Paul Heyman had the money that Tony Khan had right now. ECW would be the biggest company on the planet. Maybe a little bit scaled down version of the insanity that you saw in the mid-90s, but it would be. And I truly believe that. I see nothing but upside for AEW. And anybody who does not see it, I, I welcome them on the show to discuss it. And we're going to talk about it with the nation. 877-344-4893. 877-FIGHT-93. 